Hello. Welcome back to the garden. Welcome back to, can you see the clothes horse? It's all right, there's no knickers on it today. Um, I need to harvest my potatoes. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't know if it's because we had a really hot June, then a really wet July. The foliage didn't flower like last year. I did, um, it's a different variety of potato. It's still a first early. I don't even know if there's potatoes in the bag. Um, I'm going to lift the potato bags over to this flower bed that has the old alliums in it because I'm just going to chuck the soil in there and then um, I want to turn this bed into something probably not in this video but I'm going to clear this bed out and get it ready to do a lovely thing I'm going to put like autumn cut flowers in it like late summer autumn cut flowers I think because I don't know if I'm going to do veg in it I might do my Brussels sprouts in a container because I prefer the flowers anyway Let's see if there's even any potatoes in these bags. Also, let me get one. It's a bit bendy. I got a better one. Oh. The heads are a bit bendy, but these are Allium Globe Master heads. Um, so anytime I've had these, sorry, I thought I could Run over. Anytime I have these in a video, so these flower around about May to June time and they're big and purple and anytime people see them in a the video they're like oh my god what are they giant alliums so they're called Allium Globemaster and they're much bigger than your usual alliums and they leave a lovely seed head. Now I'm going to dry them upside down. I'll keep some to dry upside down in the greenhouse and hopefully that'll strengthen the stem as it dries out because some of the stems are a bit floppy. But I remember last year I held on to some of them. My neighbor spray painted some and has them as little decorations. So, oh, you can also hang on to let it go to seed and collect the seeds. But alliums are a bulb, so I think they're easier to kind of grow from a bulb. I've never tried to grow them from seed. If you've tried to grow allium from seed, let me know. So yeah, I'm gonna hang on to a couple of these and pop them into the greenhouse. While I am clearing out my alliums, I just want to say hello to any newbies who are watching this video and hello to my regular viewers. If you are not subscribed to my channel, it would mean a lot if you could hit the subscribe button. I upload every Thursday and Sunday and it would make a massive help to my channel. If you like the videos, if you could hit the subscribe button and also share these videos amongst your community. Thank you so much. For any newbies, I planted potatoes oh, this year in compost bags, like just bags that you would buy in the shop. Last year, I there's a weed, little treat. Last year, I did plant them in grow bags, and the grow bags were a bit bigger and they were really, really heavy. I can lift these ones. Um, there's the last of some of the foliage. As the foliage died back, I just pulled it off and put it into the compost. So I don't know what's going to be in here. I think these are Mars Pipers as well. So I'm going to chuck the soil here, get the potatoes and we'll see. I have three bags. I gave a bag away actually. Who did I give a bag away to? I think I gave it away to Adele. Must check in. So yeah, I'm going to chuck it in and then I'm just going to leave the compost in here um, because potatoes use up lots of like nutrients and stuff. And there's already some lovely soil in here so i'm just going to chuck it in here you can see that the soil level has dropped on this and um, so yeah let's tip it in and see what i have
Okay, big apologies about the wind. I really hope my mic doesn't pick it up. You can probably see <laughs> it's all of a sudden just got really windy. But I wanted to share my soggy spuds. So this is what happens when you get 40 days and 40 nights of rain. But um, no excuse, I should have had better drainage. So I'll share what I learned now in a minute, but they, actually that was not too bad. He's not too bad. So um, when they go green, green is bad, poisonous if they go green. Um, Monty Don was actually sharing ways to store them, I think in last week, two weeks episodes, I think he had harvested some potatoes, um, but they were in like a raised bed and he was saying, giving some tips about storing them because if they get like sunlight, they can turn green and that's when they're poisonous. So we have some soggy spuds here and these were the ones one particular bag at the very end um was obviously where it was getting too wet and there wasn't enough drainage so that is what happened so i've learned a lesson so i do have oh hang on that one was on the squishy side so i'm gonna pop him out so this is what i have left there's a nice big one there not too bad. So yeah, we do have some left. I won't survive the winter. Last year, I did my spuds in grow bags and I had more of a crop. However, the bags I remember were so, so, so heavy. That was the only downside to them. And they used an awful lot of soil. This year, I used compost bags, easier to lift. I got yes, less of a yield and the drainage was harder even with like there's loads of holes at the bottom I think the plastic I don't know it could have just been the circumstances and I didn't have enough drainage I probably should have moved them out of the location as well I think next year please remind me in March I'm going to do buckets because I'm thinking buckets are a bit easier to lift and yeah, I might try buckets because they have a nice handle. I can lift it. Easy to drill loads of holes at the base for drainage. And I think I'm going to try buckets. I could also do a raised bed, but you know how I like to keep the raised beds for cut flowers. Um, yeah, and there's loads of bulbs. Like I could use this raised bed, but when, like in March, this is full of tulips, if you look back on old videos. So I am. Um, I have loads of spring bulbs for cut flowers in the beds. So yeah, that's just my experience of the potatoes this year. I didn't do a main crop. I always kind of just do first dailies because I heard that if you do main crop, there's more of a risk of blight. And does rain cause blight? Does too much rain cause it? It's a fungal disease, isn't it? I'm not sure. I will have to Google that. Um, let me know in the comment section if you know what causes the blight. I just know that it's more common towards the end of summer and that's why main crop potatoes are at risk because that's when they're in flower or their, their foliage and it's in flower. I did see a picture on Instagram with someone sharing what blight looked like on the leaf. I think it was Quick Crops Instagram was sharing it. Quick Crop is just, yeah, their Instagram so you can check them out. So that's one job done. I'm going to store my abundant harvest thank god i have the privilege of so i have the privilege of growing for fun and um, i don't have to rely on my crop i can go to little and get some potatoes which is a very privileged thing to say and i am aware of that a for effort f for fun <laughs> so my next job is taming this pink geranium absolutely love it but it has just well, <laughs> it's taken over the pond. So I'm going to, I can't even see the pond. I just want to get some air into it. So I'm going to cut back, like here's some lovely cam chamomile. Apologies about the wind if my mic is picking it up. So yeah, I'm going to get in and I'm going to kind of just cut back around the pond. This has loads and loads of bees 
and I don't want to take away from them but I'm just cautious of if anything is maybe living in the pond and it needs a bit more oxygen, a bit more air. So I'm just gonna give it a little haircut. Yep, so it looks like I didn't cut much, <laughs> but I did take loads out of the pond and then there's another pile of it there. Um, but I did manage to get a bit more. Yeah, I could probably go back in and cut this, but I've revealed the Blondie monument. And yeah, you can see, I didn't want to get too much sunlight into the pond but there is definitely loads of creatures living in here i didn't see any frogs or anything like that but there's definitely loads of pond snails there's loads of bugs so yeah i've given it a bit more oxygen but there's still loads of like foliage and areas around it so if there is any little creatures that they have shelter and it's not exposed to the sun but this does look a bit chaotic doesn't it like i mean it doesn't look too bad from here <laughs> and it is you know into the wild kind of corner but yeah i think i need to do a bit more here but the bees are enjoying this i don't want to take too much from them so we'll wait for this to finish flowering and then i'll have to cut it right back and sort it out pond grasses I mean I want to leave them for their shelter but here's the grass here and it literally just looks like chaos so I might actually give that a haircut The Rebecca is out in the front, which means it's definitely heading towards autumn. I'm gonna cut back the seed heads off these. I've been saying I've been gone to zero for ages. I'm gonna do it now, I'm gonna grab my snips. Um, this is how we're looking. I definitely should have supported plants a bit more. Poor old verbena is on the flop from the weight of the hydrangea. So I definitely didn't prop things up as good as I did last year. Lots of kind of greenery. I've started to fill the wall a bit more. Uh, older viewers will know that this was like a big white blank wall. So I've managed, I've got two different clematis and then I don't know what this climber is here. I got it as a cutting a couple of years ago. So this rose has a new growth on it. Same as this one. I'm hoping I get a second flush. This is a lovely yellow flower on it. And then this one, little white flower on it there. But um, I actually need to deadhead it as well. It's a climbing rose. So yeah, this is how I'm looking in the front. Definitely transitional. Some achillea just on the turn there. There's a geranium Janet that I planted last year and it hasn't really done much this year. It just has one little pink bud on it. So maybe next year couple of random cosmos as well and I need to deadhead this Shasta daisy and there's a little orange flower as well in there so I need to deadhead them these are the teasels that I did from seed all of them have loads of lovely foliage but no sign of like anything growing I must check the seed packet or google and see are they maybe a biennial and maybe they'll come up next year 
or if they're a perennial and they're just slow to grow from seed for the first year. Um, I had loads of borage in here and it was looking lovely but as you can see all the borage has died back. Something that has done so well is the barrels. So you'll remember back in, was it May? I was working on the barrels and everything looks super full. Let me just zoom back. Super full strawberries. Um, this is the Bacopa, loving the rain. This actually uh, flowers when it has lots of water. It's called water hyssop, isn't it? I think it's called water hyssop. A um, little bit of lavender, a bit of gypsophilia. Some flowers, these are the ones Karen gave me. These are the little ones. And then if we look up here, I've got a sunflower. So these are the ones from the back that I, I didn't propagate them. I thinned them out as seeds. They went floppy. I didn't think I had thinned them out correctly, but they took once I gave them a bit of time. And then there's another one there. So something I now want to do is I want to finally fill up these barrels. As you can see, they are full to the brim with water because of all the rain. So I actually, I can't tip them over. So I'm gonna get my watering can and just water all of the flowers to the side and then try and tip it over. I need to drill holes into them and then fill them. I'm gonna position them first where I want them and then fill them with the soil because they are going to be very heavy. My head of garden from last week. Thank God for friends. <laughs> my good friend Adele came with her sister, her sister's boyfriend, their daughter, <laughs> and helped me lift <laughs> this garden out of the boot of my car. Um, a lot of the plants, because I couldn't water the plants for the telly segment because it would add to the weight, um, I need to, a lot of my plants just got like dislodged. So I need to give this a bit of TLC. But if I look exhausted, it's because I am. It's now half six. I've been out in the garden since 10 o'clock. I know my footage probably doesn't look like that, but I was shoveling those things for a good hour. So um, I'll come back to this in the morning. I think they'll be fine for a night. They'll be fine for a night. And I'll give this a rejig. I put this here because there's gravel underneath and the wood bottom is off it as well that I had if you saw last week's video and this gets a lovely bit of sun it gets lovely sun in the morning um, then it has a little break and then it gets sun again in the afternoon so I think herbs like a minimum of like six hours worth of sun um, so this is a nice sunny spot and it's not too far from my kitchen <laughs> but I will have to give it some love but tomorrow <laughs> I actually just ordered um, 
I ordered it cheaper. I feel like I've earned it. After dropping what it was I wanted to share. Oh my god, I have some nice things to share with you. Ooh. It is the next day. I'm all clean, I'm all fresh. I was going to plant up one of the containers, but I actually have an art class this afternoon in actually like two hours. So I was like, will I plant up that container? I'd knock it up in a half an hour, but I know I would be absolutely filthy with muck and I don't want to be filthy for my class. I'll tell you actually about my class in a minute. But I got some goodies from Phoebe from forager.ie and I found Phoebe through, it was actually um, Ireland AM. She's a forager and she has like a segment on the show. Now I haven't met her in person. I just seen her on their Instagram. I have to say I'm finding loads of lovely people um, through that. Last week I was chatting to a girl called Erin, the edible flower, and she grows flowers that are edible and she uses them in baking and cooking and she has like a stunning book as well. I think I shared her Instagram in last week's video. But um, yeah, Phoebe sent me a few of her goodies. Now I haven't opened this box, um, so I thought we could open it together and see what foragey, I think she makes her own products out of the stuff that she forages. So I know you guys love a bit of that, so let's open it. Also, I think someone is doing a bit of strimming in the background in another garden. So first of all, loving a bit of lavender. And no doubt that's probably from her garden as well. So I actually have some lavender here. Actually, I'm gonna use this as a bookmark in my book and I'll share that book in a minute. Um, this is Phoebe here, um, forager.ie is her website and I think that's also her Instagram handle as well, but I will pop her Instagram handle on the screen. Bear with me while I try and open this string because I am, I have got nails on. Ooh. How pretty is this box? So we have some lip balm. I'm gonna try and zoom you in. Oh, I love this. It's cold sore fighting lip balm. Contains olive oil, beeswax, neem, and Melissa leaf oil. And it's not too heavily scented. I'm gonna try a little bit. It feels really nice as well. Okay. I'll go through the little bits that we have. We have some, oh, Daisy Balm, all-in-one skincare salve, 100% natural, with foraged Irish daisies. Daisies are known for their healing properties in soothing scars, bumps, bruises, bites, and stings. Always patch test first. Each pot is lovingly handmade and poured in Dublin. I love this. And that is the Daisy Balm. All I actually have some bruises from bit too hardcore gardening this week so we can use it on that dream cream skin loving moisturizer so what's in this one oh anti-wrinkle we love a bit of that so there's only so there's rosehip seed oil calendula oil shea butter coconut oil sweet almond oil vitamin e oil geranium and lavender essential oils i love the detail of the lid as well this smells amazing that smells you can smell the lavender off that it smells amazing then we have, ooh, gardener's glove, hand, hard working hand salve. This is me, <laughs> this is a bit of me. Um, so apply soothing sal salve to dry or cracked hands, ideal for anyone who works with or is hard wearing on their hands, always patch test first. And the ingredients is this is Olea Europea fruit oil, don't know if I'm saying that right, Sarah Alba, Citrus Orantium <laughs> Dulces. Okay, peel oil, I'm not saying that right. Citrus lim Lemon Peel Oil, Zingiber Officinal Root Oil. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna try. Helianthus Aniseed Oil. Helianthus, I think, is that sunflower? Um, so let's give this a little smell. So I definitely need this for my hands. I love that it's a nice kind of balm 
I find this is great for like your cuticles as well. And that has a lovely light scent as well. Nothing is like too overpowering. Cause I know sometimes with scent, it can kind of trigger migraines. Photox, woo! Nature's Botox face and eye cream. I am here for a bit of Photox. Okay, you will definitely give that a bash. Then I have some, oh, belly balm. Oh, period pain relief. My, my sisters. Okay, what's in this? Magnesium oil, I know that's great for sleep, isn't it? Organic olive oil, organic beeswax, clary sage, geranium, Roman chamomile, clove bud, and geranium essential oils. And that is belly balm. Apply liberally where you feel dull or dragging, period, aches and pains for external use only. So, let me smell this actually. Oh, that has a lovely kind of warm scent to it. Almost like a spicy scent. Maybe that's the clary sage. Ooh, skin and tonic. Okay, I love what she's done with the words here. Gin and tonic, skin and tonic. Super hydrating, foaming face wash. Face wash, sorry, I can't talk. Um, and then this has aloe vera, rose hip seed oil, vitamin E, witch hazel, apricot kernel, calendula oil, organic castile, rose water, and then a blend of frankincense, ylang ylang, lavender, and tea tree essential oils. And also Phoebe did send these to me, um, hashtag gifted, but like it's not an ad, I just wanted to share some small business love. Hopefully, oh it's nice, hopefully I get to meet her in person soon. I think she does foraging workshops or else she does workshops where maybe you can make stuff with her. I did just see it in passing on her Instagram, so if you want to go over to her Instagram and give her some love, I will put the handle here. And also. Um, the other girl I met last week, Erin, she did message me, she's like, can I send you my book? And I was like, girl, let me buy your book because I know what it's like. Uh, authors do not make a lot when it comes to books. So when it comes to supporting people, I like to buy their products. So when I actually need to order Erin's book, I've just reminded myself, I don't have my phone on me. So when I order and get Erin's book delivered, I will show it to you. I think you guys will love it. The photography of the, of the, plants is beautiful and um, I'm not mad into baking or cooking or anything like that but this book was beautiful it was just really pretty and um, so I'll show that to you when it arrives now I do have another book I want to share with you so my art class that I'm going to this afternoon um, I'm really excited about it it is local which was great I am doing that now, this isn't the artist's way but this is the author Julia Cameron and I found this book in the artist's way it was like other books by Julia Cameron this is quite old does is there a published date on it I had to buy this second hand but I wanted to share it with you because I think you guys will like it it's prayers to the nature spirits by Julia Cameron and um, this actually came from America there was a sticker saying three dollars ninety-nine I did not pay three dollars ninety-nine I think I paid ten <laughs> But here we are, um, it's second hand and there was a lovely little um, poem in it. Oh, a prayer by seven. Okay, I will stick in a few screenshots of the little book as I am talking to you about my art class. So I am doing The Artist's Way, which is, I, I did it for the first time back in 2020. And it's like a 12 week um, workbook. But it is a book, so you do morning pages. You can have a little Google of it yourself. So you do morning pages where you wake up every day and before you do anything, as soon as you wake up, you do three pages of journaling. Whatever's in your head, um, just first thing, it can be whining, it can be anything you want and your morning pages are yours, they're not to be shared with anybody. And then every week you have to do an artist's date. And when I did The Artist's Way back in 2020, it was in lockdown and obviously we couldn't go out and do artist's dates. So an artist's date is where you just go off by yourself. It can be anything. It could be going into the garden centre by yourself. No phone, no whatever. It could be going to the craft shop, getting yourself something as a little treat. It can be going to a museum. It could be anything. But um, cause I've been kind of busy, I was like, and I was on holidays, I found it hard to get the artist's date in. So I decided to sign myself up for an actual class. So I haven't been to it yet. I'm going this afternoon. I'm really excited. And I found this place and 
you have to do a course of 10 weeks worth of art lessons and I was always like, oh it's kind of expensive, but it's not really when you break it down per week. And I was like, no, do you know what, I'm going to treat myself to these art classes. All I want to do is paint flowers, um, paint and draw flowers. <laughs> I know I photograph them and I know I do whatever, but um, I wanted to do something creative that was just for me. I'm not going to monetize my painted flowers, I'm not going to... Um, Dogs agree. I'm not going to do anything with my paintings. I just want to do it for me and nobody else and just so now put my phone down and do it. Where was I going with that? Oh yeah, that's basically why I didn't finish planting up those containers because uh, it's the next day. I'm all washed and I'm clean and uh, yeah, artist dates. So let me know if you have done the artist way. It's um, it's like not a new thing, like the artist way, Jesus, I think it's was it, it could have been the 80s or the 90s. I think Julia Cameron is still alive though, is she? I don't know. But, um, yeah, there's loads of different versions of the book. I'll leave a link to the one that I'm doing or the version that I have. But um, there's also exercises every week. So, for example, one of the exercises this week was write a letter to your 80 year old self and then write a letter to your 8 year old self. So it's quite deep. There's a lot of exercises in it. I don't get to do all of them every week um, but it's quite insightful and you don't have to be an artist to do it um, like an artist like you don't have to be I think everyone is creative um, there's a pigeon on the roof there he is <laughs> anyway um, if you are looking for something um, like this year I I'm not going to say lost touch but I love doing something like journaling and checking in with myself and I had a couple of months spell where I wasn't doing that and I felt the effects of it. My anxiety creeped up, but you know, I think it's good to check in with yourself. And um, if you are looking for something that would do that, yeah, maybe try it. But I remember when I first bought the book, I couldn't do it. I found it too much. Uh, I remember I was working at the time and I was up barely and I was like, I can get these morning pages done. So don't worry if you're not in the right mind frame to do it. There might be something else. But I find just journaling really helpful anyway. So I'll let you know how my little art class went. I'm really excited to go. Um, I think I'm going to do drawing and watercolour. I'm going to just tell my tutor I just want to paint flowers and draw flowers and maybe gardens or like woodland creatures. Um, I know I've done some like landscape and Bob Ross and acrylics before, but I think while I have a tutor, I tried watercolour before and I found it really hard. So maybe this girl might, she might teach me, I don't know. But anyway, that's me for this week. <laughs> Sorry for the random waffle at the end. Um, head on over to Phoebe, give her a hello, tell her where you came from. Um, show her some love on her page if you like what you see and yeah give her a follow and I will see you in next week's video and I'll pop a playlist here if you want to check out the other cottage garden videos. Mm -hmm.